Hi, today I'm going to show you how to code this pixel art so that as people answer your questions, it will appear color by color. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Here's another pixel art where as people answer it, it creates a design. This is the type of thing that we'll be doing today with our mittens. If you want these mittens or that house or my other winter designs, click on the link in the description below. You can also create your own picture and this video will show you how to code your own artwork. First, you want to make sure that your artwork is all finished. So even if you have these mittens, if you want to change the colors, you can go through and do that now. The next step is to write your own questions and then answer them. The way you write questions is just by clicking on the box and typing. And you can change the font and other specifications. So if I select that, I can change it if I want to. You do wanna make sure that they're very concrete questions that have one answer and aren't open for a lot of interpretation like numbers or one word answers. So go ahead and write in your questions and answer them. Now we'll talk about the actual coding. We're going to code the answer boxes. That's it. We're not coding these, just the answer boxes, one at a time. When I code the answer box, I'm going to choose a color from the picture and make this box turn that color and the colors from the actual mittens. There are nine questions and eight colors, which means I can do one box per color and then I'll do like one of the colors I'll split up. So maybe like the last two will be half of the main blue color and the other half of the main blue color, but the rest of them will be one color per box. When you code, you have to tell the computer the name of this box and you do that by telling it the column it's in and the row that it's in. This box is in column B, and it's technically in rows four, five, six, and seven, but we just call it four. So this one is in box B4, and this one is B8, and this one is B12. Okay. Let's look at the code now. It's down here, but I suggest writing it down. The code is equals dollar sign column dollar sign row equals answer. So this part that says column row, that's what I was just talking about. You're going to put the column, which is B. And then for row, you'll put whatever row the box is in. So this one's four or eight or 12. For answer, you're gonna write in the answer to your specific question. For me, this one is nine, this one is 10, this one is Denver. You have to put the words in quotation marks if it's a word. If it's a number, you just put the number. For example, coding this first box, it's going to be equals dollar sign B, dollar sign four equals nine. That's the code I'm going to use. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick a color that I wanna start with. And I've decided to do this darkest purple because there's not a lot of it, so I think it'll be easier. I always click on the color first so that I understand what color it is and where to find it. Come up to the paint bucket just to see where it's located. It is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth one in, and darkest one of the custom colors. And it looks like it's here, and then maybe a couple shadows in here. This is shading, and it's kind of artistic. If you, you know, mix up two of your purples, it's really not the end of the world. But it looks like that's where these purples are located. Okay, now I'm finally ready to code. Click on the box you're actually coding. We're coding the answer box. Now we're going to open up the window. Come up to format. If you don't have this window, click right there, or this menu. Conditional formatting. And now you can see it's opened up a code for us associated with this box over here. First, I'm going to select the color I want. So it's a good thing that I just looked at the paint bucket because now I'm over here and I have to find that color all by myself. It was this one. There's the color. Now I'm going to write the code. Come here and click and go to the very bottom one, custom formula is. This is where we write the code. Equals dollar sign B, 
dollar sign four equals nine. Where this nine is here, you are going to write in whatever your answer to your question is. If it's a number, do it just like I did. If it's a word, put it in quotes. Now I've technically successfully coded that box, which means if you take the nine out or put any other number in it, it'll be white. And if someone writes a nine in there, it's coded to turn purple. So that's a successful code, but we do need to select the dark purple in the mittens also so that those also turn. The way to do that is to click on this button here. This is for the range. Window pops up, slide it over. I'm now going to click on all of the dark purples in the mittens, but first, do you see how this box is already selected? That's good. That one needs to stay selected. In order to stay selected, I have to hold down the control button, or if you're on a Mac, hold down the command button. This allows me to click on more pixels without losing pixels that have already been clicked. Now I'm going to go through and select all the dark purples that I want to be part of this code. That's all of them there. If you accidentally click on something you don't mean to, like this, you can click on it again and it'll take it out of the, the range. Now I'm going to take my finger off of the control button and see that this nine is still selected there. It's kind of hard to tell though because it's a dark purple. Now I'm going to do three things. Got to pull this up. I'm going to hit OK to finalize the range. So I'm OK with that range. It's done. The code is still up, so I have to hit Done on the code. And the last step is very important. I need to come to the paint bucket and hit Reset. If you don't do that, then it'll stay purple all the time regardless of the answer. Hit Reset. Now this code is done. I'm going to click off of it because everything's selected right now. Let's test it. Come up to the 9, hit delete or backspace on your keyboard, and it disappears. Now put a 9 in there and it should turn purple. But to get it to work, you actually have to click off of it before the purple pops up. There we go. That one is successfully coded. And we can see when we click on it that the code is there for us if we ever need to go back into it. Before I go on to the next question, I'm going to take this 9 out because I don't want to get confused about what I've already coded and not coded. I want my mittens to be disappearing as I go. For my next color, I've decided to do the lightest blue. Before I start my code, I'm going to click on the lightest blue and make sure that I know where to find it in the paint bucket. It's the third one in. Now I need to click back on this box. Make sure that you're always coding the answer box. I still have this conditional format window pulled up. If yours isn't pulled up anymore, you can click on format and conditional formatting to pull it back up. I'm going to click add another rule and I'll follow the same steps as before. First, I'm going to choose the color that I want it to turn. So I'm going to pick that color that I was just looking at. Now I'm going to write my code telling the computer the name of that 10 box over there and what the answer is to the question two times five. Equals dollar sign column, which is B, dollar sign row, which is eight, equals the answer to my question, which is 10. The last step is to come up and apply it to the range. This is the step that takes the longest and requires the most patience. Good that this 10 box is still selected. I'm going to hit Control or Command and hold that down while I click on all of the other lightest blues. Blue can be kind of tricky because it selects it in blue to show you that it's been selected, but then it's a little bit harder to see. So this one does take a lot of patience. I have to look really closely to see that everything's selected. But if I miss something, I can add it back in later. I think that's all of it, so I'll take my finger off of control. I need to pull this up here, and I'm going to do my three steps. Step one is to click OK on the range. Step two is to click Done on the code. Step three is to click on the paint bucket and reset. Now I can test it, click somewhere else. Now come back over here, delete the 10. They disappear, and I'm going to answer both of these now to see if my mittens are complete. Looks good. And you can see there that 
these two are now showing as coded over here. Now I'm going to do Denver and I'm going to do the lightest purple. Let me click on that and make sure I know where to find it. One, two, three, four, fifth one in. And then before I add another rule, because look, this one's selected, I don't want to code that pixel. I want to code this box. Now I'll hit add another rule and I'm going to choose that lightest purple. Now remember I said that if the answer is a word, you have to put it in quotes. So when we get to the Denver part, we're going to put quotation marks around it. Equals dollar sign B dollar sign 12 equals Denver. It doesn't actually matter if I capitalize it, it won't affect the code, but it's a proper noun. So that's why. Okay. There we go. I just put one too many quotes in there. See how I was, I was kind of messing with it until it turned purple over here. That's how I know that it's right, is that it turned purple. Great. Now I'm going to put in my range. Click on data range, slide this over. I always like to put it somewhere where I can still see that the Denver box is selected. Hold down control or command and select all of the colors that match the color that you're using. For me, it's this light purple. Lightest purple. Now take your finger off of control or command and do your three steps. Hit OK. Done. And reset the paint bucket. I'm going to do one more and then I'll speed up the video. I'm going to do this blue. And remember how I said that there were eight questions, but or eight colors, but nine questions. Since I have more questions than colors, I'm not going to select all of this shade. I'm going to select half of it, more or less. And this color is actually pretty frustrating to work with because it's so close to the color of the selection box. So I just need to be very, I need to look really closely at it as I do it. I'm going to first figure out where to find that color. Oh, it's the first one, great. Now I'm going to click on the box I'm actually coding. Come over here and it ha hit ha add another rule. Now I select my color and I'm going to write my code. Same as always, I'm putting Bismarck in quotes though because it's a word. Equals dollar sign B dollar sign 16 equals Bismarck. Code is good. Now I select about half of those blues. I can select big chunks like this, or I can select random little ones. If I select little pixels at a time instead of a big chunk, it's more fun for the person who's solving it because the mittens appear in little pieces rather than chunks. Like I said, this color is hard to, to see. So if you want, before you code it, you could change the color of the mittens, but it does kind of pop up to show you that it's been selected. All right, we'll call that good enough for now. I'm gonna hit okay, done, reset, click off of it, come back, delete. Good. So now I have five questions and five colors left. And I'm going to code one color per box. I'm going to speed the video up now and then we'll check in at the end and see how it looks.
Okay, I did end up leaving one of those out. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to put that back in. Uh, you can see that when you click on it, nothing pops up because that isn't coded. But what I need to do is go back and find the answer box that shares the same color. That one's too dark, that's a light purple. There it is. Now I'm going to open up that code and just add that little box to the range. Click here, slide it over, hit control and add it back in. And sometimes when it does that, it replaces other ones that were in the same column. So it takes a little bit of pa uh, patience sometimes and just troubleshooting. Let me test it. I think it worked. What I'm going to do now is fill in all of them and see how it looks. Let's see, what did it leave out? Did it leave out those two right there? Let me come back and add those to the code. It's very odd when I add in colors, sometimes it takes others out. Hold down control, put those back in, hit okay, and now it popped out that one. It's so weird. Hit range again. If you know why it does this, please tell me in the comments. So I'm just gonna keep adding it back in though. There we go. Okay, hit okay. There, now everything's in it. Didn't delete anything that time. Let's hit done and reset it and see how it looks though. Reset. Awesome, blue's back in. And I did one more thing on this because I wanted to show you another troubleshoot. Not sure if you can see it, but there is one that is coded the wrong color. And it's this one right here. It should be that light purple, not the lightest purple, but this one. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm going to open up this code and add that little guy back in. Open it up. Hit range, hold down control and select the one that needs to be purple. Hit okay. It took off a couple on the top, I don't know why. So I'm gonna hit range again, hit control, put back in the two from the top. One, two. Hit okay. All right, now I'll hit done. Come up here and hit reset. Great. Now, when you click on this one, you can see that it's coded twice. And it's coded with this one, B28, which is the box that's selected over there. Can you see it in the answers? The one that's selected is this one. What I'm going to do now is open up this box and take out this one here. This box, let's see what it's called. It is called Y19. So I'm going to open this code right here and just take Y19 out of it. Don't delete the code because that code affects all these other pixels. But I'm going to open it and just take out Y19. Y21 is in there. There it is. So Y18 and Y19. Well, I want 18 to stay there, so I'm not gonna hit the trash can, but I can click and just use my delete button or backspace to do that. There we go. So now Y18 should still be there, but I'm taking out Y19 out of the code. There we go. So I took it out of the blue code and added it into the purple code. Great. Um, if you want to watch that again or in a different context, I also have a video right here called Troubleshooting and it addresses five common mistakes. And two of them are the ones that I just showed you with the mittens. I have made almost a hundred of these now and usually one little mistake happens every time and it's just part of the process so please don't be discouraged if a bunch of mistakes happen 
it's kind of part of the fun. And this project is just really, really good for you because it encourages a lot of patience as well. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you go to my channel and click on pixel art, there are 20 of these videos that'll show you how to code a small project like this. And that's where you can find this video as well. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I hope that you have fun with your pixel art project.